Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We're going to have a quick look today at the Fedora 30 Beta. There is not a ton new in this one, um, just mostly some updates, but there's a couple things that some of you might really like. And so we'll go ahead and walk through what we have, and then we will boot this guy up into a virtual machine and have a look. So with this, uh, here is uh, from fedoramagazine.org is the release of the beta. I mean, first thing out of the box, the background image is just not nearly as cool as the 29 was. But, you know, let's get out of that. <laughs> All right. Um, so inside of here, of course, you can grab the betas for the workstation, the server, the silver blue. Um, they do have beta for uh, the existing spins, labs, and ARM. And then... Uh, the two biggest thing most of you are going to like or some of you are going to like is they now have the inclusion for the Deepin and Pantheon uh, will add the families. So as of the time I'm recording the video, those are not yet up on the spins. Uh, you can install Pantheon. Uh, uh, yeah, you can install Pantheon uh, with DNF in the terminal when you're installed. I did not test doing Deepin with that, but I did see that on the net installer for the beta, you can install Deepin there. You can't install Pantheon there as of right now. Um, they do have some DNF performances, and we are now shipping with GNOME 3.32. And actually, just my, my brief experimentation inside the virtual machine, this guy actually runs really well. Um, Fedora is one that I'm, I'm actually very impressed with how far along the distro has come. And I think with every version, it's just getting better and better. Uh, of course, I'm not a huge fan of GNOME, but uh, that being said, uh, it definitely has, uh, has its, its merits. Uh, there's just a few other things, um, adding some, some extra libraries, mostly just some package updates. They are removing Python 2 because of the end of life coming in 2020. And then it, testing is needed. So if you happen to be a Fedora guy, uh, definitely have a look at this. Help them out in their testing and report any bugs that you find over to the team. Of course, their spins. Uh, they have the KDE Plasma, the XFCE, LXQT, uh, Mate with Compiz, Cinnamon, uh, LXDE, and Sosa. I don't know. I have no idea what this one is. Uh, is that the weird one. I don't know. I'll have to look into this desktop. See what that one is. I've never seen that one before. Looks neat. All right. Um, also, uh, you will notice that on this one does not yet have the Deepin or the Pantheon on this list. Uh, so we'll go ahead and um, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, look at these, uh, look at the distro. So first, let's go ahead and uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and boot up with a net installer just to kind of show you the installation type section, and then uh, we'll jump out and go into a machine that I already have built up. So, of course, um, the links on the links on DistroWatch um, will take you just to the workstation. So you will have to uh, you will have to drill into the um, into the Fedora's web page to download the net installer. Uh, so that's what we're running on right here. So the, I did actually install the machine from the live image. It works just fine. Uh, but I was like, how do you get Pantheon or Deepin on here? And so uh, I went ahead and grabbed the beta for the net installer because the net installer allows you to choose which desktop environment you're installing on. And uh, as we will see, the um, setup options will give us the ability to install deep in but they do not give us pantheon i don't know if this is just something that's accidentally missing or if there's a reason that it is not included this does take a few minutes here sitting in gray for a little bit just let it sit for about a minute it will come along okay so we are now on this screen here um it's not going to let us install. Mostly we need to work with the software. We need to work with the system. And if you come down here and select the uh, software selection, it is still downloading information from the metadata. So we're going to go ahead and give this just a few more minutes. And uh, then we'll go ahead and poke around in here. Okay, so now these guys are no longer grayed out. So we can come in here and select them. We're not going to go for this installation source. We're not actually installing it. Um, but we can go with the closest mirror or pick a mirror that you want. Inside the software selector, though, you can pick the basic uh, environment. So we have a custom operating system. We have a minimal Fedora server, Fedora workstation, which is the one with GNOME. 
There's a cloud server. Then we have our Plasma, XFCE, LXDE, LXQT, Cinnamon, Mate. We have Sugar, uh, Deepin. Uh, so this is where we have a new one. So if you want to install Deepin directly, you can do that. Then we have Development Creative, Web Server, Infrastructure, and Basic. You'll notice that Pantheon is not in this list. Like I said, I don't know if this is an oversight or if uh, it's intentionally left out of here. And then, of course, we can select our various uh, various things here. We're just going to go ahead, though, and uh, cancel the installation, and we're going to go ahead and uh, boot into the uh, actual install. Okay, so we are now on the GNOME desktop, and uh, as I said in the introduction to this, there's really nothing that's super surprising in here. Um, if you are familiar with Fedora, it just installs with a basic desktop environment, a nice clean setup, minimal applications. Uh, you can see that we are running on version 3.32.0 of GNOME, and so we have all of the, the different settings and amenities uh, therein. Here's our online accounts, our privacy options. Of course, when we turn this on, we have the option to enable or disable location services, problem reporting. I left problem reporting on since this is a beta. I like doing that on betas. And then there's basic applications, integrations, and things like that. So if you've been following the GNOME 3.30, uh, excuse me, 3.32 development, uh, then you'll know that um, what the various options in here are. Um, it is actually it is actually a, a much more responsive version than has been before. Uh, very nice, very uh, um, uh, just a, a nice little little system here. Now there are more things installed here than there were, and uh, the reason is I installed Pantheon on here. Um, without installing that, there's a few things that it added. Um, it probably added this calendar despite already having this calendar, this photo, and despite of having another photo application. So some things that got added when I added the, uh, the Pantheon desktop. Um, the software center, of course, is uh, what you're used to inside the software center. Uh, nothing too familiar um, out of the ordinary with that, I should say. And everything else on the system is very much the same. Um, it is snappier. I am noticing that it is a lot snappier, a lot easier to use. Uh, than uh, than I have. So in other words, it's it's getting better and better and better. Uh, the GNOME desktop is is certainly one that is uh, that is becoming um, uh, a snappier, easier to use platform. I can actually now see this going on to something like a tablet interface um, and uh, being able to work smoothly. So so that's good. Let's go ahead and see if there's uh, uh, how much system we're using here. Looks like we're we're still using about 1.4 gigs of of RAM, but again, it's it's snappy, so we don't care. All right, we're gonna go ahead though and log out, and let's go ahead and show you what the uh, login screen is like. It's much the same, but now I went ahead and installed Pantheon. So we have GNOME, we have Classic, uh, we have Xorg. So of course we're running uh, Wayland um, by the the default. But we're going to go ahead and log into Pantheon now. So here we have our Pantheon desktop. Um, so if you are familiar with this one, we it just kind of it's like a modified GNOME, really. This is built by the elementary team. We have our integration for our music players and things up here. Here's our network, our network settings, our user functions. Uh, our calendar is over here. Just kind of hover over it to get it. Uh, okay, there it goes. I had to click it that time. Your applications, you have a few different things inside the application list here. We can go over to this view, which is going to give us the simple applications that we have, or you can do more of this type of view here. So you can load into the various things. Then we have a, a little panel down here at the bottom. So how do you actually install Pantheon if you are wanting to give this a test? You're going to want to run sudo dnf group install and then in single um, in single quotes Pantheon desktop and the single quotes. So that's going to install everything related to the Pantheon desktop group and that's going to install your Pantheon desktop. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, overall, I think if you uh, if you like uh, Fedora and you are interested in the development. Uh, of the platform, definitely go check this out. Once again, uh, have a look at the 
uh, at the beta build, report any bugs or any issues, particularly if you are a Fedora user. So you guys will be able to tell a little bit better who uh, is using us or not. I'll also mention one other thing that I think Fedora has been doing a great thing at in recent years. And that is when you first log up the software center, it gives you a little banner up here at the top and it asks you if you'd like to enable uh, your additional repositories. This is one of the important things that is making um, Fedora a lot easier uh, to use uh, because it, it used to be a lot more difficult to get these various functions on here. Now, when I experimented with Fedora Plasma, I think, uh, which was the last time I ran this for any period of time, this is not an option that they give you easily. So I actually had to fight with uh, NVIDIA drivers and, um, uh, and some of the codecs and things like that. So they used to make those a lot more difficult to get added on. Now it's a little bit easier. So if you want Google Chrome, you can do that. Um, here's NVIDIA, here's for Steam. Then there's a few other things on here as well. So there's the GNOME um, shell repositories enabled. So this is actually um, a function that I really think that they've been doing a, a lot better job at. So here's update preferences. We can turn on automatic or turn off automatic and then turn on or off notifications about those as well. So the, even the software center in GNOME is getting a little bit better as time progresses. But uh, with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and leave this video at that. And I uh, look like I'm converting into a Smurf. No, Papa Smurf, no. Um, <laughs> but anyway, thanks for coming along on this video. Definitely check out Fedora 30 Beta and uh, leave them some feedback. It is, I got to say, it's, it's becoming a much better system than when I first uh, came over to Linux. Fedora was... It was lagging behind the usefulness, and I can actually see see myself using Fedora. In fact, not long ago, I did run Fedora on my um, on my jumping PC here for a while, and it, it ran well. I, I enjoyed the time on it. So with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. You can help support the channel. Have a look at the links up above me or in the description down below, and follow along on the social media platforms if you'd like to do that. So with that being said, thanks for watching, and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.